Hello and uh, welcome to my studio. Uh, today we're going to paint um, George Harrison. It's part of my project of the, the Fab Four in color, you know, after the Fab Four in black and white, and um, it's going to be fun. So now you get a little bit used to it. So I have my uh, my image on the left side of the screen, and um, you know, I already told you I'm painting on a white ca on a yellow canvas. I'm sorry, uh, just because the four portraits on um, yellow background, and I wanted the yellow to be the same, so it was easier to you know do it with uh, acrylic than oil painting. So I primed the canvas with uh, with acrylic painting. Usually I like uh, I like kind of satin. Uh, the matte, I don't like to paint on matte acrylic because it swallows the color so much, uh, it's not really pleasant. So I like satin um, because or eggshell uh, because you know it gives that semi uh, absorbance to the to the canvas that is that is really nice. So I start as usual with a large brush, um, outlining um, quickly and uh, you know fast the, the the big sketch, the big composition. I usually start with the the dark color. You know, I mean, it makes sense. You know, it's a it's a little bit like sketching. I it's, it's obviously it's more hard, or it makes no really sense to start with the um, with the white or the not the white, but you know, the light and color. So I'd rather start with the the dark and color, which helped me to um, outline the 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 sketch. So that's that's really funny because you know, in the 19th century. Uh, they were using um, uh, tar to do that, and uh, which led to a lot of problems with conservation. And, and uh, you know, during the time, uh, the painting reaction, the chemical reaction with the tar, uh, was um, was not really good. So now, what I use mostly is um, um, you know some black or brown burnt umber uh, that I mix with liquine and turpentine. So now you're used to it as well, I guess. So, uh, you know, I'm working on the four paintings at the same time. So basically what I'm doing is that I'm spending about, you know, between 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes on each painting. And then I change the, the, the portrait to the next one and so on, which is really good when you work on the, on the band, like, like the Beatles, because you have four, um, four portraits to do. The reason why I use Liquin is because it's going to dry fast. So basically tomorrow by tomorrow, the painting will be dry. So I'm going to work for one, two, three, four, five, six days. I don't know yet. Uh, obviously I know now because the video is done, but when I start the painting, I really don't know how long it's going to take me. It's going to take me a certain amount of time. Uh, you know, it will take me as much as it need. I'm start playing a little bit with the colors because he has that beautiful red jacket. I'm not sure yet if I will paint, you know, what I will paint, what I won't paint. You know, I'm just going to go with the flow. So I already switched to a smaller size brush. I like to start with a big one, you know, it's like the, the big gun. So it helps me to really paint fast and cover the surface pretty quickly. But this brush is still pretty, pretty large. So you see at the beginning, no details. I'm not looking for any details. I'm looking for the big mass, the big, you know, the big scale, the big, the big image. So the, where are the, the dark zone, the light zone. And once again, remember, I never name. I'm trying not to think in terms of eyes, nose, ears, and so on. Right now I'm painting, um, and once again, not an abstract landscape because it's not abstract, it's figurative because you can already know it's a figure, you know, just with that, it's already a portrait. Um, now, of course, it's about the amount of time I will spend in order to make it more realistic or more expressionistic or, you know, something like this. So, you know, I want you to really Remember, you need to have fun. It cannot be a painful process. Just be free. You know, I don't mind if you, you know, if the whole proportion is not there, if things are not at the right place and so on. For now, it's it's not really the problem. Anyway, I can tell you on my painting, nothing is at the right place yet. But, you know, I'm just locating things, you know, roughly. 
I use, I usually, I, I really like the analogy of, of mapping um, in the way that um, it's really about making some sort of a, of a map of an unknown landscape. So it's almost like I'm trying to draw something or paint something I can give to, you know, one of my friends and say, you know, you want to go there? Look, that's the map. So it's why proportions are kind of important because, you know, uh, it's the distance between things are important as well, mostly when you don't know the area. Now we have the GPS. But there was a while, you know, a long time ago, um, where we had to know how to read maps. I guess young kids don't know how to do that anymore. So I'm mixing, playing, and um, you see, I'm using colors. I'm, you know, I know the colors will will be different at some point, but I like to start with vivid colors. So if I see a pink, I really do pink. If I see an orange, I do orange, and so and so on. I don't get into any details. I'm just, you know, roughly saying. So where is that? So feel free to do the same. And you know, you don't have to push it really hard. Actually, you will you will see that sometimes the strange thing is that, you know, we go through stages through the painting where sometimes we just say, well, I like the painting this way. It's not necessarily photorealistic, but there's an energy, there's something about, you know, the, um, the, um, the pleasure of painting or, you know, just the energy of painting that is nice. If you do a painting and you like it, and even if it's not finished, because you know we we will have a conversation one day about what means finishing a painting. That's that's something pretty complex. But if the painting, if at some point you like what you've done, just start another one. Just you know, it's why it's great to work on paper or to work on cheap support like you know cardboard or something because you, you don't really feel the pressure of ruining the surface. Of course, if you paint on a three hundred dollar canvas, uh, you're going to feel a bit more pressure than if you paint on the on a shoebox or something like this. So if you do something you like, just put it on the side. You never know. That doesn't mean it's over. That doesn't mean you're not going to work on it anymore someday. But sometimes it's good to keep tracks of what we've done when we feel there was a past or there was something interesting for future works. Portraiture has always been um, a big part of my work. So for me, portraits are really something I love to do. Now that said, uh, that series, I'm not sure, you know, um, what I'm going to do with all that. It's um, basically like a like a training, and it's um, and it's just fun, you know, to paint those guys. So good memories. So as you can see, I'm already starting blending a little bit, you know, getting rid of the of the really harsh line and uh, starting playing with that. It's going to be a lot of that. It's going to be a lot of of blending, a lot of you know, organizing passage, making them nice. The problem is that sometimes we focus so much on organizing those passage, we don't put them at the right place. You know, like there's a you know that difference on the cheek on the right between that or orange and that pretty you know light color you know almost like white um you know if 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 i don't pay attention I, I can move that thing from more or less an inch so you know by blending because blending is you can pretty much lose the lines when you blend lose the drawing lose the strengths lose the the structure of the face So right now it looks more like a cartoonish character, but uh, if you've seen the other one, you know now it's just what it is. When you start the painting, it looks more like. Um, that said, I really love the energy of of those those you know sketchy uh, paintings because they have they have an energy you might lose after a while. Uh, you know, there's something about the sketch. There's something about um, you know it's like it's like ask a kid to sing a song. You know, sometimes it's just like breathtaking. 
And if you ask the, the, to do it again, sometimes they can't. Because the first energy, the first uh, impulse is really important to keep. But it's the same thing when we work. We need to keep that energy. We need to be aware that sometimes we get tired. Sometimes we get, you know, because of course the, the level of concentration or the level of, of um, focus it takes to paint at the beginning, you know, when we're not, when, you know, when people are not, you know, like professional or something like this, if it means anything, um, you know, sometimes we lose that. So if you feel even a little bit tired or you want to take a break or you just want, don't want to paint and you just want to look at the video without painting, you can absolutely do that. So as I told you already, you know, I take a break once in a while. Obviously, I just took one. And um, so what I did during that, that break, it's a bit more than a break, actually. What I do is that I've been working on the painting for, um, I would say, uh, about um, 10 minutes. So the first stage was 10 minutes. And now I'm working on the second stage. So basically, I put the canvas, worked on 10 minutes, and then I worked on the three other portraits of the Beatles. So I don't know how much time, you know, sometimes it's six minutes, seven minutes, eight minutes, sometimes it's 20. I don't, I don't measure it with a, with a, with a chronometer. I just go with, you know, my, my mood and how I feel. So basically I work for 10 minutes. Then I put the painting on the side, work on the three other ones. So there may be an hour that break I took is maybe an hour. The interesting thing about this hour of break, first of all, it reset my vision. So, um, when I put the canvas again on the, on the easel, I see it with a new eye. And um, the other reason I took those breaks is that it helps the painting to, it's not going to be dry, but the painting is going to, it's going to um, um, deep in, you know, like, I don't really know the word for that, but you know, the painting is going to penetrate the support and the turpentine is going to evaporate a little bit. So it's not dry, but it's still something that allows you to work on top of it without necessarily working in fresh paint. And actually, it's pretty funny because it's almost like we have a natural clock. I'm just checking right now on the timeline because that's a voiceover. So, you know, I, I do it now. It's basically, um, I record myself while I paint and then I go on the computer and edit the videos, um, you know, in order for um, for the whole process to be understandable. And it's why I'm pretty honest about the the time where I, I'm, you know, when I take a break or you know, when I, you know, sometimes I take a break. I mean, you'll see that video, I take a break for, for one day. So, you know, I, I'm not going to paint the painting in one day. But anyway, it's funny. I just noticed that the first session was 10 minutes. The second session was 10 minutes as well. So it's almost like I have a natural um, clock inside of me that just tell me, okay, 10 minutes on the painting might be enough. It's not necessarily I get um, tired or exhausted. It's more, I feel like I want to keep that energy, that thing that I'm happy about, about what I'm doing. You know, it's a little bit like going to an amusement park, you know, nothing is better than the first 10 minutes. Mostly when you're with like six kids, you know, the last three hours can be a real torment or a torture. No, I'm kidding. So for the one who's seen some of my videos already, um, you know, it's always a matter of comparison. It's always a matter of, okay, um, evaluating things regard to the other ones. Um, is it darker? Is it lighter? Is it higher? Is it lower? Is it more on the right, on the left? Is it more orange, more yellow, more blue? So by judging every dot, every little touch of painting regard to the other one, then I get closer and closer to the result I want to obtain. And, you know, during that process, I'm going to generate a lot of mistakes. Like, for example, you know, I just ruined the mouse, you know, kind of, you know, I put that black thing on the upper lips and it doesn't work. No big deal. I know I will have time to come back to that. So instead of getting completely crazy about that little touch of color and spending, you know, the next 20 minutes trying to fix it, I just move on. I just go somewhere else on the painting. I will go back to that. Anyway, there's so many things I need to go back to that this one is just a little part of it. So no frustration there. Don't get upset if you ruin something, if your brush just like, you know, 
ruin a thing you spend 20, 20 minutes to do and you thought it was amazing and then you with one brush stroke you just like make it completely go away don't 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 feel upset you will get back there there's nothing you cannot do twice if if what you do is completely random and completely by chance or by luck then it's not really i mean it can be painting of course the the the, the um the the mistakes are part of the the success in in a painting like sometimes you do something and you know some sometimes you wouldn't you, you could think it's wrong and that might be the most powerful thing in the painting now on the other end the, the painting is also a skill process a learning process uh something you you need to be able to repeat you know i mean you see, that's the thing about um, kids' paintings. When when we think about kids' painting, you know, the draw kids are doing fantastic drawings. I mean, I love it, and um, I'm a big fan of kids' drawings. Now, the difference between a, a great painter like you know Matisse, Picasso, or whatever, and a kid is that Matisse or Picasso are gonna be, are gonna do 100 drawings, and among those 100, 99 will be good. For kids, sometimes it's the way around. So there's something about the repetition, about the, the decision, about the awareness of what we're doing that kids don't have. I think what is fascinating is to see kids, um, you know, using painting because usually they grab the painting that is the closest to their hand and not the one they want or the color they want. You know, it's like it's like if there's a blue, like just where they can grab, they're going to use that blue. You know, you, you you can do that. You know, once again, what I want you to experiment is is the freedom and the pleasure of painting. It doesn't have to be something difficult and painful. Actually, painting is a, as I said already, painting is a luxury. So you see, just randomly working like without even, you know, really sweating or being terrified or whatever, I'm starting getting to a point where um, I'm not saying it looks like him yet, but obviously it's a portrait. Obviously, it's a face, and I want you to keep that good energy. You know, the, the problem when we paint people that we know or celebrities or whatsoever, um, of course, there's always the issue with the likeness. Um, if you like doing those paintings and you're not happy with the likeness because maybe you, maybe it's going to be difficult for you at the beginning to get the likeness. You know, don't don't feel obliged to paint someone that is recognizable. You know, nothing is worse than doing a portrait of someone, and your friends are coming and they think it's someone else. Um, so uh, you know, don't don't feel bad if you're doing the portrait of, of George Harrison and he looks like uh, John Lennon. So I already talked about the negative space and positive space. You know, I don't really like to talk about negative space because there's something really uh, negative about negative space. And um, I would rather use the, the, the concept of, uh, uh, you know, the, the distance between things. So you can use the, 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 you can use the side of the canvas um, to locate the face, the, 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 you know. Um, sometimes we look so much at the face, we even forget that there's a space around the face, like the, the, that yellow background um, that is actually really important to define the shape of his haircut and his that that shape of haircut is as important, believe it or not, as his nose, his eyes, or his ears, or whatever. Um, it's the whole thing about that particular image. So now I'm working a little bit in the mud. I think the painting is not dry enough, and so on. So you know, maybe it's time for me to just take a break for the night, put the painting aside, and come back tomorrow when the whole thing is dry. See you tomorrow. Okay, I hope you had a good evening with friends and, uh, you know, whatever you've done. Um, I don't remember what I've done that night, particularly, because um, I've done that painting about 10 days ago. So people sometimes ask me, you know, do you start with lighter color, darker color? Do you do the, the um, lighting after and so on? I'm going to tell you, I have no recipe and I'm really happy to have no recipe. Um, you know, once you have a recipe, you're a maker. Um, being a painter is about being um, a wanderer. So basically, you know, kind of 
I don't know where I'm going. Clearly, I don't know where I'm going. And, and I like it. I like to just be led by the colors and, you know, something that is more intuitive. So once again, I, I cannot tell you, oh, start with that, do that, put that color here or that color there. I have no clue. What I know is experiencing freedom is actually pretty nice. So I like to keep the center of my palette clean. So it helps me to mix the colors. Um, each time I, you know, it's, I think it's important to clean your palette often to avoid to be lazy kind of and reusing the same color you created for something else. So I like those close-ups images, um, you know, because the image you see of uh, the easel and the painting on the easel is taken from the side. Uh, with those close-up, I'm using a, I'm using a software that helps to put the paintings back, like you're like you're looking at that painting the same way I do. So you're in front of the painting. Technology is amazing, and you know I'm I'm pretty blown away by. What I can do now is all those those softwares and all those applications and so on. It's a great way for me to share the work with you guys and to show you my perspective on the painting. So don't be scared, don't be worried, don't feel like you're never gonna make it. Actually, um, I gave up on that feeling a while ago because I realized that. It's all about time. It's all about time. It's all about um, discipline. It's all about um, uh, consistency. It's all about humility. You know, each time you you think you cannot make it, it's um, strangely it's because you judge yourself. Strangely, it's because you decide you don't have the skill. Uh, painting doesn't have a lot of things to do with skills. There were painters much more skilled during the 19th century than the Impressionist. I'm talking skill like the capacity of doing a photorealistic painting. That's a skill. That's something you can train for. Doing a beautiful painting, there's no, there's no training. It's all about, I don't know, it's kind of magical. And quite often, actually, the more you're going to show your fragility, the more you're going to show your... Um, your doubts, your humanity, the more people who are looking at your painting are going to connect with you. Because they will say, wow, I'm not the only one. So they will connect with you and they will love your work because, um, because nothing is greater than the possibility of loving someone um, because that person admits he's not perfect. I'm not really sure we can love perfect people, actually. Because... What can we do for them? So the painting now has been going on for roughly 23 minutes. The black and white were faster. Of course, the more information, the more time. Once again, I'd rather have you doing five paintings than doing one where you struggle so much that you're going to be um, upset or frustrated. If you do something and at some point you think there's some energy, something is interesting, even just a tiny bit, even if it's just part of the nose or the hair or whatever, just put it away and work on another one. It's why it's really nice to work on, on paper. As I said, the paper, the great thing about paper is that the glue of the paper doesn't get uh, um, diluted by the turpentine, so the paper remains completely flat. Actually, as you know, I'm, I'm mostly, I mean, the people who follow me, uh, I work mostly with oil painting. The reason I work with oil painting is um, water-based technique has a tendency to change of colors when they dry, 
And, and for me, acrylic is definitely too much plastic feeling when I paint. I don't like that. I like the old painting because it's almost, um, you know, it's like mayonnaise, mayonnaise, you know, it's like mayo. It's like, a, it's like a salad dressing. It's like, a, you know, there's something, you know, really enjoyable about it. Actually, funnily, a lot of, a lot of painters are also good cook because it's about the same thing. It's about mixing, organizing and tasting. It's about, you know, correcting myself constantly. You know, I just look at something and I say, okay, that thing is not at the right place. How can I fix it? And then I fix it. And when I'm going to fix it, I'm going to ruin something else. There's no other way. So don't feel upset if, you know, you try to think something and boom, it's gone. No, just take a break, breathe, and go back to it and make it better. You might have followed already some um, some teachers or you know some art lessons and so on, and they, they tell you to make a skin tone, use that color, that color, and that color, and you mix it. You know, there's some there's some uh, recipe of um, making colors for skin tones and so on. Okay, I'm gonna be um, right uh, honest with you on that. I think that's completely wrong. BS. Um, skin tones are. There's no recipe for skin tones. Skin tones depend on so many things on the light around, um, if you had a lot of carrots or not, or things like this. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but uh, just just go with the flow. Just, you know, we could paint actually an apple or we could paint uh, strawberries or a landscape or whatever. It's the same thing. The difficulty is the same. Either you paint a portrait, either you paint an apple, either you paint, you know, anything. Of course, an apple might sound easier, but you're not going to paint an apple. I mean, the goal is not to paint an apple. The goal is to paint the apple we're talking about. Actually, it's, it's, a, it's like a balance between the ability to see and the ability to do. If you, if you don't see, then there's nothing you can do because you don't see it. And now if you know how to do, but you don't see, same thing. So you need to find that balance between seeing and doing. Uh, so when you, when you paint, you have to, um, you know, you have to see the things first. You have to see where the lines are, if the, the face is too long, if the eye is too high and so on and so on. And once again, it's not about putting the eyes necessarily at exactly the right position. I love, I love uh, El Greco. I love, um, I love, you know, there's so many painters I love. I mean, I'm pretty much like, um, you know, I love exp expressionist painters. I love painters who don't necessarily are in a, in a photorealistic way of painting. But still, the, those painters, those, those painters I love, they still seeing and watching and you know van gogh for example van gogh was not painting in a in a realistic way in a photorealistic way now i can tell you something his colors are always on the spot now when van gogh see a color that is a little bit little bit orange or a little bit yellow you know what he's going to do he's going to put a real pure yellow and you will pure orange but it's still it's it will still be the right color it just the way he locates that color on the on the scale of saturation that's going to change um, so if you want to paint that portrait with vivid colors, orange, blue, violet, and green, and so on, just do it. I'm not here to tell you or teach you to paint like me. I'm, the best I can do is to try to make you paint like you. You have the answers. You are the answer. And the question is, what is a good painter? Is a good painter being capable of uh, doing a painting, you know, once again, photorealistic way? Or is a good painter someone who's going to talk about his own vision as the closest as he can be with a lot of honesty and not lying to us about, um, you know, being either too good or, you know, the problem with some of the really gifted painter, I'm talking about people who have a really gift to, you know, copy, mimic reality or whatsoever, uh, sometimes is that they, 
they don't uh, they don't understand that painting is never about the gift. It's never about the skill. Actually, the skill can really frighten the viewer. I'm not talking about, you know, sometimes you see a, a really well done painting and you're just like, wow, I'm impressed by the way um, the guy is able to paint. I don't know if you listen to a lot of rock song or, you know, that music where the guitar player can play 600 notes a, a minute. I don't think it's about that. And by the way, the, the, that's a great thing about um, the Beatles is that their songs are really simple. You know, you can you can play a song of the Beatles with just a guitar on on the beach. You know, you don't need you don't need to be an amazing guitar player and so on. Their songs are so beautiful because it's simple. And I believe painting is the same. I believe the most beautiful paintings are often really simple, actually. Which that doesn't mean they're easy, but they're simple. So you see, I'm blending. It's day number two. Um, the colors are dry, so now I can you know cover some of the areas. I'm still I'm still painting exactly the way I started the painting. Remember, I, I was sketching quickly and so on. I'm, I'm not changing the scale of um, my vision. You know, of course, I, I'm reducing the, the size of my brush as I go, but the, the process, the, the thought process is the same than when I started. It's about, you know, first of all, having fun. That's key. I mean, if you if you do something and you you really struggle and you're really bored and and you really yeah, there's a lot of chance you're going to do a boring painting. So first is about loving what you do. You know, I was talking about cooking. I think it's the same. I mean, you know, a chef that doesn't like like that and love to cook, I don't think that guy can be a great chef. So painting is the same. What I would love you is to for you is to love what you're doing. If you can do that, that's a win. Um, the results will come with time. And once again, humility and honesty. Um, be yourself. One of the difficult things is to be ourselves. We, you know, when, when kids, when, when young students join art school, sometimes they have the possibility of choosing their teachers. Most of the time, those kids, those students, they choose the teacher they want to paint like. Um, Okay, it's not because you want to paint like someone that it's you. Um, Sometimes you want to paint because, you know, it's a lot about questioning. Like, uh, you know, art is a lot about questioning who we are and so on. And of course, when you meet someone that is as a powerful, a strong personality and so on, you, you say, oh, I want to be this guy. It's pretty much all the, the actors, the famous actor, you know, um, become famous because people want to become like them. They want to identify themselves to those people. Um, in painting, the best person that you can identify with is yourself. If you can do that, believe me, people will love your work. I love those close-up views. They're, they're pretty cool. Even for me, it's it's pretty interesting to see, you know, the all the 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 the, the brushwork is so uh, is not is not like you know I'm not painting with a little tiny brush and so on. I'm pretty I'm pretty you know like um, just trying to find the the right position without paying too much attention to how clean it is. We are about at 33 minutes of painting. I feel like the painting starts looking a little bit like, uh, like George. See, I'm playing with those beautiful orange. I don't hesitate to cover, to cover what I've done. Look, look, you know, I'm, I'm just covering the whole chin because I thought it was not, you know, um, I'm not respecting what I've done because I know that if I have more demand, if I'm more, um, uh, you know, if I'm more difficult with myself, if I ask more to myself, it will get better. So don't hesitate to get over something you've done. Even if you like it, you might do better. Okay, let's take a little break. I'm going through all the paintings. So as you know, now I'm during that time. I mean, 
it's three seconds on that video, but actually I just worked on the three other Beatles. And I'm going back on this one. So basically the first day I do two sessions and the second day um, I might do more, I, I don't know. So far it's, um, it's round number two. So now, of course, the, the, the colors start being more, um, so I have some dry under layout, you know, and dry um, um, and underneath and the um, um, layers. And now I can blend the colors more. So there was no way I could do that the first day because the color were too wet. So each time they were coming with my brush and uh, well, now my, I work with less colors on my brush and I'm blending more. So I'm trying to get rid of the, the sharp the sharp lines. The other thing I didn't tell you yet, but um, I'm going to give you a big secret. The viewer, the people who look at your painting, they are really smart. You have to trust their intelligence, first of all, and I will get through, I mean, I will talk about it someday, about why um, the human species is pretty much the only one to practice art, um, I mean, on a conscious way. So the viewer who is going to look at your painting is going to know a couple of things. First of all, people know usually that um, in a portrait, there's a nose, a mouth, and eyes. It's the same thing when, um, you know, uh, you paint, uh, you know, I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about Rembrandt right now. So Rembrandt, if you look at the self-portrait of Rembrandt, you'll notice that quite often the ends are not repainted. They are, but they're not really precise. Um, now, if you look at some uh, painters from the 19th century, you know, we call them the firemen, and, and I will tell you more someday about that. Um, they paint the hands the way they paint the face. Okay. When you talk with someone, uh, you look at the eye of the person, you don't look at the hand. So Rembrandt was smart enough to understand that the viewer would know that at the end of an arm, quite often there's a hand. And, um, and so trusting the viewer is really important. It's why sometimes over skill painting kind of bother me because sometimes I feel like the guy is trying to prove me he's good and um, almost like he thinks I'm so dumb that I'm not gonna understand that at the end of the arm, there's a hand. So trusting the viewer and making your viewer feel that he's smart is actually not a, not a dumb thing to do. So don't worry, the viewer will make the math. The viewer will, will see if the painting um, is honest. And people are looking, from my experience, people are looking more about finding the, um, the freedom, you know, sharing the freedom of the painter. Because, you know, uh, painting is, is, as I said, it's a luxury. It's also freedom. It's a lot of freedom. Um, you know, some people in the, in some countries in the world, they don't have the luxury to paint because they have a family to feed and um, they don't have time. That's it. And they don't have the material and so on. So when you, when you paint, remember, it's a privilege. It's, uh, it's a blessing. It's something fabulous. And, um, you know, it's, it's actually pretty, pretty funny, but um, I think art creation come also from boredom. I mean, definitely, if you take a kid who plays video games 16 hours a day, he has no time for painting because he's not bored. Because he needs to be entertained. So painting is really that place where we have time. Look, it starts looking like, um, like George, and we are barely 39 minutes now. And you see no sweat, no, no, nothing difficult. I have so many things, so many information when I look at that photo that I need to put on the canvas. Anyway, um, I understand if you feel a bit overwhelmed. Um, I feel overwhelmed when I do things like this. When I start a painting like this, I feel like the mountain is so high, I will never climb it. But you know, the only way to climb a mountain is to start climbing it.
I was watching a movie yesterday about a guy who does a solo. Um, he's a he's a climber, professional climber, and he does a solo on El Capitan. That means he has no he has no rope, and um, you know if he falls, he dies. Here, it's risk free. Okay, so now the painting is really dry once again because I you know I painted it um, uh, yesterday. So now, of course, I'm working with a with a smaller brush, and um, I don't have a lot of painting on the brush. The reason I don't have a lot of painting on the brush is I don't want to bring too much. I like to work with something pretty dry so I can control it. So don't hesitate to wipe off the excess of painting from your brush before you go on your canvas. The other thing is, once it's dry like this, if you do something really terrible, if you do the, you know, it can happen. We can do, you know, something, a big mistake and so on. You can use a piece of cloth, a piece of cloth and wipe it off. But remember, you have time. You have time. There's no, you know, it's, a painting is actually one of the few things you cannot really give a time frame, you know, like how long it's going to take. And you see, when I look at the eyes, if you if you look at the eyes closely, you will see just a big mess. And still, when you look at these eyes, you can see the eyes. I think that's one of the magic of of the painting is that it's about the power of the brain of the viewer as well. You know, of the people who are looking at the painting. Our brain is such an amazing machine to read things and to understand what's around us. The modern technology is really something extraordinary. For centuries, painters have been painted, uh, painting in the um, in the secrecy, in the loneliness of their studio, and it's not something you can share really with people. You know, I mean, basically, a painter, most of the painter, you know, will show their works when it's done, or you know, I mean, some friends visit and so on, they can see some work in progress. But most of the time, we look at a painting when it's done. With those videos now, with those those tools, and um, you know, it's part of the thing that uh, would interest me right now, because as a kid, I wanted to be um, um, I wanted to be Walt Disney, believe it or not, and I was so upset to learn when I was three or four years old that the job was taken already. So um, you know, with all those tools we have, like you know, I have I have several camcorders, I have an iPad, I have. Uh, um, I have computers, I have all those things. And so I can create those videos. Uh, of course, you know, it's, it's not easy. It's not like, a, um, it takes some skill as well, but, uh, I think it's pretty fascinating for me to see as well, the way, um, the painting is being made because I don't see it. You know, when I'm working on the painting, I don't see that. And, and I want you to, uh, oh, I love that little orange I put just on the side of his lips. For some reason, it's giving so much volume to his, to his lips. So, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty fascinating because as you paint, you don't see what you're doing. I mean, you see, but you don't because you see what's wrong. You don't see the, um, you know, what's good at the time you do it. So it's really strange. It's like we have a self intimate level of demand that's going to direct us to know if a painting is done or not. Um, you know, some people will take a giant bucket of painting and, you know, throw it against a canvas and tell you it's done. And some people will spend days and days with a tiny brush trying to make the painting absolutely perfect. At the end of the day, it's about what you give to the viewer. All the viewer connect with your work. And uh, once again, I don't think it's about I don't think it's about showing the viewer how better you are at something. I think it's about seeing, showing to the viewer how honest you are at being yourself. I think, you know, even for me, looking at that, I think that's pretty magical. Um, as I said, I, I don't see myself painting. 
I, I don't witness myself painting. I paint and, you know, I'm so much into the thing that I, um, you know, it's a little bit like, you know, being a music, musician on stage, like, you know, like the Rolling Stone or, you know, I said the Rolling Stone or I'm painting the Beatles, it's pretty funny. But when you're on, 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 on stage like this, what is the feeling you have when you play the song and uh, at the moment you play it? Um, I don't know, it's pretty strange. So if you remember, I did the, the, the white um, on the cheeks of uh, Ringo with some pink. For, uh, um, for George, for some reason, the light is different. So I'm not going to do the, that, the, like, the lightness, the light with, with pink. I'm going to stick with whitish yellow. You know, once again, there's no recipe. There's no, I cannot tell you, oh, to make the skin tone, just take... Um, a yellow, orange, mix it with some um, blue and some white, and then boom, you have the skin tone. No, no, it doesn't work this way. Luckily, it doesn't work this way. Otherwise, you know, we could use a computer to do that. So now my brush is pretty tiny. And... Um, what you can do that helps a lot is to squint your eyes, you know, to try to uh, limit the amount of light that gets into your eye so you can see better the big picture, like the big composition of the face. Like you see under his right eye, there's this big triangle. I mean, his right eye is, it's not his right eye, it's his left eye, but the eye that is on the right. You see that yellow kind of triangle? It's almost like a Masonic symbol with the eye. So when you paint, try always to simplify as much as you can the complexity of the shapes you have to paint. Try to make it like basic geometric figures, at least at the beginning. So we're at about 47 minutes and I'm still painting, it's impressive. So you see now the dry brush helps me to blend finger two. I can still change things. I can still modify things. I can still say, you know, that doesn't work. Okay, let's take a break. So my palette is still, you know, there's still some colors because it comes from the previous painting, but the color, you know, each evening I clean the palette. I put the turpentine in a bucket or in a bottle. So it has the time to, um, um, you know, the, 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 big, the big particle in the turpentine goes down and I can reuse the, the same turpentine the, the next day. So I recycle my turpentine. I never throw away turpentine. I throw away the, the, what fall down in the bottle after, you know, several months, but I'm using the same turpentine. So, you know, cleaning the, the, your, your, um, your palette and so on is really important. What I do as well on the liquid, I have a little container, a little um, tape, um, uh, an old tape cardboard, you know, the thing that where the tape is around, you know, those, those really large tape. And so I covered it with some, um, some tape as well. And I put it like a cover on the liquid that helps the liquid not to dry overnight. I paint pretty much every day. So the liquid doing this way, the liquid doesn't dry. Now, if you paint only once a week, um, that's a little bit different. You can store your brushes in the water. What makes the painting dry is oxygen, oxygen, oxygen. So it's, um, you know, it's um, the time. So if you put your brushes, they, they sell those little springs that you can put above a, a little glass of whatever water. And then if you make your, your brushes um, um, hang in the water, they won't dry. So you don't have to clean them. Because cleaning brushes is it's really difficult, actually. All painting kind of stay on the hair of the brush forever once they once they experiment it. I have actually about 10 brushes on my on my palette and I rotate them. So 
it's pretty weird because after a while I get I get so used to my brushes that you know it's um I'm not going to say it's heartbreaking to get rid of them, but you know it's still you know some story. Now the funny thing is when I get a new brush, it's like it's like getting a candy. And I like candies. I love gummy bears. Not that it's really relevant, but. It's little details. I'm at a point now in the painting where I feel like, you know, it's just like tiny things here and there. And I can ruin everything. You know, in a matter of a couple of seconds by putting something too much and some but once again, no big deal. No big deal because I can come back. I can can fix anything. I don't know if I will fix it, but what I'm seeing right now is that I don't like the upper the upper side, left side of his right eye. So basically the one that is on the left, it's almost like he's a bit upset. I hope I'm gonna fix that. I told you that being ADD is kind of important when you paint and it's true, you know, it's about, everything is so much in, in correlation, in relationship that, um, it's important to look at everything at the same time. Every single thing matters. Which is actually strange because it's it's a way of seeing the world as well. Like we all connected. It's the butterfly effect. If you look at my um, my video about color theory, you know I talked about um, uh, contrast and simultaneous contrast. And the, the tricky part about this kind of painting is that everything, you know, the, the, the dark areas, the where the shadows are mostly on top of the eyes, they're really dark. But if you start looking at them really closely, then you're go, you're gonna see all those lights, and it's really easy to get tricked and to make them too light. Something you look at where you start something, it will always have more importance than when you look an inch away. But you should paint it the way you see it when you look an inch away and not the way you look at it when you look at it, you know, and focus on it. Because your focus is going to lure you into something else. So I think I'm almost done with that painting. It's been about 52, 53 minutes. And of course I could work on it forever. Um, but you know, at some point we need to say, okay, you know, that's what it is and that's good the way it is. So I hope you will join me for the next one, the next painting. I hope you had fun watching that video and uh, I hope to see you soon guys. So have a beautiful day.